Hello crafters, this is Yana Smakula. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In this video, I have oval shaped cards for you. I just wanted to do something different and step away from the traditional rectangle or square shape and do a different shape for a change. I'm using products from the Stylish Ovals collection from Spellbinders to create these oval shaped cards. This is a new collection, very beautiful. It features quite a lot of different products and I have a quick product overview for you first. Now, if you don't wanna see the product overview, but would rather skip ahead to the card making process, I have timestamps in the video description below to help you do just that. So first up, we have my favorite die from this release. This is the Infinity Punch and Pierce Plate. It is an A2 die meaning it cuts a background for an A2 card, which measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And it is a very detailed, very intricate, it looks like lace to me. And I always love to use dies like this as they add a ton of elegance to my projects. And if you know me, you know that I love elegant card making. Now, what's unique about this die is that it cuts three pieces. So it's not one solid background, but three individual pieces. And you can use this die in a variety of ways. So you can use the three pieces all together, like a one background, or you can use just the sections of the background, you know, like a frame or the outer section or the inner section. Or, for example, you can do different colors for different sections and have multicolor backgrounds, you know, very easy to do with this die. It cuts like butter, even though it is a detailed die. I was able to cut it just fine in a single pass using my platinum die cutting machine. And I'm using this die a lot today, and I plan on using it a lot more for my future projects. Next is a glimmer plate. This is called Stylish Oval Floral Bird Glimmer Plate. It is a beautiful motif styled inside of an elongated oval. So you have a bird sitting on a branch with beautiful flowers and leaves surrounding it. Here I have foiled it in matte gold foil on white cardstock. This is the Spellbinders Snowdrift cardstock. This paper foiled really well, despite this being a rather large design. Now, because it is an oval shape, it goes well together with the other products in this collection. You can have, for example, the Infinity Punch and Pierce frame around it to frame it if you want. You can also cut it out using an oval die or, you know, keep it as is on a rectangle or sheet of paper. Now, I also tried foiling this in opaque white foil on colored cardstock. This is the Simon Says Stamp Sea Glass cardstock. I'm using it a lot throughout my video today. It looks really nice as well. You know, you have a completely different look here with the white, looks like a little bit like white heat embossing. And then you have that beautiful light blue. You know, it's very soft and subtle. Now, there is a coordinating layering stencil set available called Stylish Oval Floral Bird Layering Stencil Set. There are six stencils allowing you to color every single image in this design. And I'll show you the stenciling process later on in this video. Here's the panel that I did. It's my test panel. It's the very first panel that I did. So I used some green, pink, and teal colors. It was very easy to do. And I would say this would make a great project for mass production. You know, if you're looking to mass produce some greeting cards, this glimmer plate and then the layering stencil are both very easy to use to achieve beautiful and effortless results. You know, you end up with a beautifully stenciled piece that looks like it took hours to make when really it took only a couple of minutes. Next, we have a set of nesting ovals. This is called Essential Stylish Ovals. Now, you might have noticed that these are not your typical ovals, you know, not your typical shape, oval shape. The whole collection is like this. The ovals are elongated, so it is a slightly different shape. I would say it is a more of a modern oval shape. So the set with the nested ovals, I would say it's a must have. You know, it is a great set to die cut any size oval you want. It is also a wonderful set to create oval shaped cards. And I'll be doing that in this video. So here you can see the oval die fits the foiled design perfectly. Another die set that I really like is the Stylish Oval Hello You Floral. Now, these names have got to be simplified. They are a little bit too complicated. I would prefer them to be much simpler because there's no way I can remember the names of these dies. 
So, you know, they're just too long if you ask me, but the dyes are stunning and this floral is absolutely amazing. I know we have a ton of floral dyes and honestly, every time I think to myself, okay, I have every possible floral shape out there, but somehow they managed to design new flower shapes, beautiful organic flowers that are so eye-catching and so beautiful, they are just very hard to resist. So this die set can be used in many different ways. So first of all, you have a stem with flowers like I'm showing you here. Or you can use the individual flowers separately to make your own floral arrangements. And again, the main shape uh, fits inside that elongated oval and thus goes with the rest of the collection wonderfully. So here I'm showing you one of the shaped cards that I already made. I used a top folding card base here and made it into an A2 size shaped card. It fits inside a regular envelope. Here are two other cards. I have the flowers used separately here and arranged in a different way without the stem. And again, they look gorgeous. And I also have that infinity punch and pierce plate using the background here to create the backdrop for the flowers. Again, these are shaped cards, although side folding, but they are still gorgeous. Same size, also A2 and fit inside a regular envelope. Now I did the foiling using the infinity plate in matte gold foil for one of these cards. So you can see the faint foiling in the background. And yes, you can foil using your regular, your regular dies. You'll just get a different look, you know, a very fine foiled line versus a thicker foil line that you would get with a glimmer plate. I do have a video, it's, a, it's an older video, but I do have a video showing how you can foil using a die. And it also shows you the comparison versus foiling using a glimmer plate. I have it linked in the cards right here. And the other card backdrop was just die cut and I used the two inner elements skipping the outside frame for this card. Now, another product in this collection is a 3D embossing folder called Beautiful Butterflies. It's a large folder, just like all of the other Spellbinders folders. Now, I did not use this folder for my cards today, but I still wanted to show it to you so you can get an idea of this product and decide if you want it or not. It is a deep 3D embossing folder, so the embossing is a much deeper and absolutely gorgeous. I die cut an oval from white cardstock and I embossed it using this folder so you can see the design. There is another glimmer plate in this collection called Stylish Oval Thanks. I also did not use this one for my cards, but I do have it foiled and I even started to color it to give you an idea of how it looks like. Again, it's that same elongated oval shape that goes well with the rest of the products. And there's also a sentiment plate and a coordinating die to cut it out. So you can either foil that sentiment things with the main design, there's space in the center, or you can foil the things on another piece of paper and cut it out and use it either with this design or any other design you want. There are also two stamp sets included in this collection. This one is called Stylish Oval's Birthday Wishes. The floral shape in the center fits the elong elongated shape perfectly and you also have a bunch of different sentiments here. Now the other stamp set is called Fill My Heart Sentiments and I don't have it here to show you. So this is a photo from the Spellbinders website again to give you an idea of the product. Next we have the butterfly glimmer plate called Fluttering By. So you have this large glimmer plate and also several coordinating dies to cut these standalone butterflies out. So this is a pretty large plate and you can use it for A2 and probably for five by seven cards as well. And the last product in this collection is a stitching die. So if you enjoy stitching, there is something for you in this collection as well. This is called Stitched Floral Flip Frame. Now this one doesn't follow the elongated oval shape, but it does give you a frame for an A2 card. You just need to die cut every piece here twice to complete the frame. And then you have the stitching flower dies. You can stitch using various colors of thread and using you know various stitches if you want to. 
So that's the look at the Stylish Ovals collection. I have a couple of favorites here, but I wanted to show you the entire collection to help you decide whether you need some of these products or all of these products or none of these products. So you can see there's a little bit of everything for everyone. You know, you have some dyes, there's an embossing folder, there are some glimmer plates, stencils, and even a stitching die. Now let's go ahead and start making those cards. I'm sure you would love to see what I created using these products. So here I have a panel that I have already foiled using the Spellbinders Matte Gold Foil. You guys know me that this is my go-to foil color for pretty much anything. I use this foil color a lot. It foils really well. It is also not as shiny as the regular gold. So it is my preferred foil color. I also have the layering stencils here. Now this is the first layer with the leaves. It's not, it's not actually the first layer, but it's the first layer that I'm going to use. These stencils, by the way, they are numbered. So there is a little number etched in the corner next to the open circle hole. And the holes are there to help you align your stencils, by the way. Now, I'm not a pro when it comes to stencils. I typically do my own thing. I also don't do a lot of stenciling for some reason. I So I don't follow with the you know most popular stenciling trends. I do my own thing. And I don't always align the stencils. You know, I don't use all of the fancy sticky mats for stencils. I go old school and I use low tack tape to ta tape the stencils in place. Now, I'm not saying the stencil mats are not good. I just haven't had the chance to really use them and explore them. So I go old school for now, but you guys do you, you know, do what works for you. If you have a favorite method for aligning and taping your stencils and keeping them in place, whether it's using a sticky mat or using a magnet to hold your stencils down, do that. By the way, I could have used magnets here to hold these stencils in place as my glass mat is magnetic. And I do have these awesome, super strong magnets from the Glassboard Studio, but I forgot. Plus, you will see that I typically like to turn and rotate my stencil as I change the direction of my ink blending. So having my stencil positioned so that I won't be able to move it is not really an option for me. So that's why I like to use tape and just move the stencil as I ink blend. Now, as for the ink blending tools, I'm using a mix of tools here. Mostly, I have the small brushes from Simon Says Stamp. Some of these stencil areas are super tiny. And for me to be able to get a nice blend and a nice variation in color, I need to use a smaller applicator. And there is a small round and a small flat brush. They're perfect for the job. You can use any other small ink blending brushes that you might have in your stash for these smaller sections. So I went with two colors of ink or two shades of one color for each section. So for example, a light and a dark green for the leaves. And I ink blended them so that I had darker color, more of that color, you know, more saturated color at the base of the leaves, and then hardly any color at the tip of tips of the leaves. Again, this makes the image a lot more interesting. You aren't just slapping a ton of single color onto your image. You are manipulating it a little bit. It is like, you know, coloring with Copic markers. And by the way, speaking of Copic markers and coloring, you don't have to have the layering, layering stencil. You can just as easily color this image using various coloring mediums. You know, you can even try and foil this in watercolor paper. Some uh, watercolor papers foil quite nicely, so you can try that and you can try to watercolor this or foil on regular white cardstock like I have here. But instead of blending, you know, use your Copic markers or use colored pencils, you know, do you. The stencil set does make it a lot easier to apply the color and to color this image in no time. It does take a lot less time compared to coloring it using alcohol markers, but that's not to say that you can't use a different way to apply color. Like I said, there is a layer for every image and also for parts of the image too. The bird, for example, has a separate tail, a separate wing and separate body sections. You can also ink blend the beak a different color. 
So you can really go to town here and play with different colors and blends. The flowers, by the way, they also have layers to them. So you can get really creative and do different blends and shades. Now, when blending the bird, because it is a bigger image, you can use a bigger blending brush. That's what I did. That makes it a lot easier to apply more color at once. So you can see I'm using a slightly bigger blending brush here. Still, it's not the big one, you know, not the biggest one out there or even not the regular size blending brush, but still a bigger brush compared to the tiny blending brushes I was using before. I'm blending with the Simon Says DM Positively Saturated Inks today. I like these colors, you know, the greens are nice and vibrant and so are the teal colors, you know, super juicy and vibrant colors. It doesn't matter what brand of ink you use, you know, just use the colors that you like and the colors that go well with your project. Speaking of colors, my color combo for today is white, light blue and teal with lots of green. So this is a very soft and calming color combination. It is not a screaming color combo. If you remember, I did the maximalism and card making video in February. Those color combos were like screaming and all over the place. This is a much more calming color combination, you know, very different from the maximalistic colors that I used in February. But that being said, you can use whatever colors you like. You can look up some other examples on the Spellbinders website and you can use, you can see what other colors they use to give you an idea of other color combinations you can um, apply to these products. So here's a look at the finished blended piece. I just used three colors here. So I didn't do any other colors for the flowers, although I could have, as the stencil does allow to ink blend the flowers using a different color of ink. Now I did some prep work off camera and I die cut the ink blended oval piece using an oval die. This is the third largest die. I have another oval cut from White Fun Foam. This will be used to pop my panel up and this was cut using the fourth largest oval. So just a touch smaller than my ink blended panel. And I will use this instead of the foam adhesive to pop up the panel on my card. And I'm just using double sided tape to tape the fo Fun Foam layer on the back of my ink blended panel. Now I also die cut the sea glass cardstock panel using the second largest die. And I have a white side folding card base that I will die cut using that same second largest oval die to create a shaped card base. Now the trick here is to make sure the edge of your die goes a little bit outside the edge of the card base where the fold is. So I'm aligning my die and taping it down using a piece of yellow tape from Spellbinders to make sure it's not going to move or shift during the die cutting process. Now, as I flip this to the back, you can see a part of the die edge sticking outside the card fold. So this is the key to creating a shaped card base. The die will cut everything but the fold, giving me a beautiful shaped card. Now I have found that I prefer to use the second largest die versus the first largest die or the largest die in the set because sometimes the card bases that I'm using, they're not exactly four and a quarter by five and a half inches, you know, and if you use the largest die, you might lack, you know, like that, you know, little hair uh, of cardstock on one side. And when you have a shaped card, you can you can see that the shape is not perfect. So I fixed that by using the second largest die and the card is still pretty much the same size. It's just a little smaller than the regular A2 card. Now I did my die cutting off camera and let's take a look. Here we have our beautiful shaped card. I'm now going to add the die cut teal oval over the card front as I want to add color to my card. By the way, you could have die cut the card base from this sea glass card stuck right away. I don't have a lot of this color cardstock, so I'm trying not to waste any. So I used white cardstock. I actually used a pre-made side folded card base that was made from white cardstock here. And next I added the ink blended panel on top, centering it on the card. I also have a foiled sentiment for this card. Now you can do any sentiment you want here. I just foiled one that reads, I'm just a text away. 
and it was foiled in the same matte gold foil on the same snowdrift cardstock from Spellbinders. So I'm using the same type of cardstock for the background where I have my ink blended and foil piece and the same one for the sentiment. This way, my white cardstock matches and I don't have any odd looking elements on my card because sometimes if you use different brands of cardstock, different colors of cardstock, you will see a difference in color on your card. You know, if I were to use, for example, the Spell Spellbinder Specialty Glimmer cardstock for my sentiment, which I do use very often, you would have been able to see the difference between the white cardstock where I have the ink blended design and the white cardstock with the sentiment. You would have been able to tell. It's not a huge problem, you know, it's it's just a minor difference in color, but sometimes it bothers me, so I prefer to use the same color and type of cardstock for all of the elements of my card. Now, I wanted to foam mount the sentiment onto my card, so I added strips of foam adhesive from the back. By the way, I'm using new scissors from Spellbinders. These are absolutely fantastic. Now, you might have seen me use the same type of scissors, but with green handles. These are an older version of the same scissors, and I love them. I have had them for years. They are very high, uh, high quality, very sharp. I use them for all sorts of things around the house. In fact, I have a couple of pairs, uh, but mainly I use them in my craft room to cut foil. And when you cut foil using these scissors, they just slice right through it. They're super sharp. Now, I also wanted to add some embellishments to this card, so I opted for these Spellbinders sequins in color teal. You'll see these on the other cards I have for you today. So I added a couple of sequins, scattering them around my background. They blend really nicely with the background as they are pretty much the same color as my ink blending. Now, I also used glossy accents. I have not used glossy accents in ages, but here I really wanted to coat some of the berries with glossy accents to add dimension. And that finished this card. This looks like it's going to be a very long video, which isn't something that's typical for me, but I had so much fun with these products. I didn't want to leave anything out. So for my next card, I started by dry embossing the Infinity Plate background on white cardstock. Even though this is a die, you can still dry emboss it. In fact, you can dry emboss with any die you own, any die you have. Dry embossing using dies has been super popular many years ago with spellbinders. In fact, many of their dies had special edges that dressed up your die cut shape. So this was very huge and very popular. Here I have my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting and embossing machine. This is a new and improved one. And this machine comes with a universal plate system. Now the plate system tells me which sandwich I need to use to dry emboss using a die. If you have an older Spellbinders machine, you could also dry emboss using your dies. You just need a, an embossing mat. The embossing mat used to be called a tan embossing mat in like the older platinum machines. And you also had a tan embossing mat in a grand caliber machine. So I have my platform base, my platform top. I'm adding my die with the paper and the die is facing up. I'm covering this with the embossing mat and adding the adapter plate on top. And I'm sending that through my machine to emboss. And look at that beautiful embossing that you get using the Infinity die. So isn't this die amazing? I mean, we can cut different types of backgrounds using it. We can foil using this die. And now we've also dry embossed it. So, so many different uses from just a single die. Isn't that cool? I think this is a must have for any stash. Now, next I'm using an oval die. This is the second largest die to die cut an oval shape from this embossed background. Now doing this, die cutting after dry embossing will flatten the embossed design a little bit. It's not going to flat it completely, but just a little bit. I do not mind this. I actually prefer it this way as my oval die cut edge will be nicer. You know, it will be, I don't know, beveled. I think that's the word that I'm looking for. Versus if you die cut the oval first and then emboss it, 
the edge of your die cut will not be as pretty. You know, you will have more dimension to your embossing, but the edge will not be as perfect. So you can do it either way, depending on what you like. I really wanted to have just, you know, a little bit of texture, but a nice, uh, nice die cut edge. So I did my dry embossing first and my die cutting later. So here I have the die cut pieces for the floral die. I cut them from various colors of green cardstock. I have all of the colors and all of the other supplies listed in the video description below. Now I also cut the flowers from white cardstock. Now the white that I'm using here, it's ju not just the plain white. It is the brushed white cardstock from Spellbinders. I adore this paper. You know, if I can use it for anything, I will use it for anything. I use it for all of my die cutting projects. It has a very nice pearlescent shine to it. There's also the same paper in black color. I also love and adore and use it very often. Not for these cards, but I do use it a lot. Now, I also have flowers cut from teal. That's the Spellbinders Waterfall color cardstock and teal topaz cardstock. Now, the large flower has two layers. And you can cut the layers from either various colors of cardstock, you know, two different shades or one color, depending on the look you're going for. Now, the medium size open flower has just one layer and the flower centers, by the way, are identical for both the large flower and the medium size flower. Although the medium size flower has just one layer, but you can cut multiple layers if you want. You can layer and offset them to have a fuller flower. That's the beauty of these dies. You have a lot of freedom as to how you can use them. The sideways flower has three layers and I cut mine from three different colors of cardstock. And I even used foam adhesive for the different layers to add dimension. So I used the thin foam adhesive for the second layer and then the uh, regular thickness foam adhesive, I just cut it into a small piece for that top layer. So the flower is a little bit dimensional. And finally, the bell-shaped flower also has three layers. So there's the main layer. I cut them from the pearlescent white. The outer rim layer, I guess that's what you would call it. And then there's the little center. And that was cut from different shades of teal cardstock to give this flower a little bit of definition. Now you also have different dyes for the leaves, allowing you to cut them from different colors of cardstock to have more color variation on your card. Now you can shape the petals of your flowers a little bit before adhering them to the card. I quite like doing that. It makes the petals a little bit more fluffy and dimensional and I just absolutely love that look. And having those detailed cut lines in the petals, that makes it easier to shape them. Okay, so I have my dry embossed sea glass background. I also already have an oval shaped card base ready for this project. I'm going to foam mount the frame cut using the infinity die. So this was cut from that same brushed white cardstock. And I'm using foam adhesive to pop the frame up over my background. Now for my card base, it has, once I die cut it, because you because our die cutting plates, uh, they're not brand new. I mean, they are. And then we start cutting, uh, using them, and they end up having cut marks. So when you cut your paper in your die cutting machine, your paper always has the pretty side and then the not so pretty back side. So my card base has the pretty front side and then the not so pretty smooth, um, not so pretty and not so smooth back side where I have all of the cut marks and impressions from my cutting plate. Here's a tip I have for you. If you have a symmetrical card base like this oval, adhere the front panel to the back of your card base like I'm doing here. This way you will have a smooth card front because you're covering the not so smooth back of your card base with another panel and then what would have been a card front becomes a card back and so you have a smooth card back. And it all just looks so much better and so much nicer in the end. Okay, finally, I can add my main floral stem over my card background. I'm using foam adhesive here to pop the flowers a little bit. And you guys know me, I have to have a lot of dimension on my cards. And lastly, I foiled the sentiment here and I cut it out using a banner die. And I'm just adding that foiled strip at the bottom of my card to finish it off. 
Now, the foiled sentiments, all of these sentiments that I'm using for my cards today, I think they come from an older Glimmer plate set from Spellbinders. I don't remember the name and I'm not sure if it's still available, but if it is, it will be linked in the description below. But really, you can use any sentiments you like. The card designs are pretty simple and pretty generic, so you can make these into a birthday card or a thank you card or like a miss you card, anything, anything you want. So here's a look at the five shaped cards I have for you today created with a stylish ovals collection from Spellbinders. I hope you like these ideas. I hope you like these designs and I hope you will give these ideas a try. Thanks for spending time with me today and I'll see you again soon.